hello guys so today we're doing makeup um i haven't done a makeup video a proper makeup video i feel like in a long time i think the last makeup video i did was my updated it was like a holiday makeup video i want to do like a proper makeup video because the last couple of times i've done my makeup bearing in mind i haven't worn makeup properly in a while besides like two days ago and last saturday it's been a long time but my makeup ate down partly because of skin prep so the first things i always use on my skin these days i got these in pr from l'oreal a while ago but first i use the l'oreal midnight serum this serum is it's amazing i use it every morning every night love it then i also go in with the revitalift filler micro epidemic hyaluronic plumping water cream this stuff is fab as well i use this every morning you literally have one pump like you would press it down and pump up but obviously i'm not going to do that right now because i've already done my skincare and then i also go in with their revitalift clinical anti-uv fluid this is an spf that is very very liquidy this has my skin glowing honey i love this stuff so these three are literally my everyday routine sometimes i put a moisturizer on top i don't always but that is generally the gist of my base like my first base before i put any primers and moisturizers on top to continue my makeup so i'm tempted to go on tiktok live i haven't done tiktok live in so long i'm very nervous i want to do it but it's also like i feel like if i do it then i have to have music in the back but then i don't want to get copyrighted but then at the same time it's just like i'm not monetized yet so does it really matter not really so this is going to be a very chill video like it's going to be a makeup video don't get me wrong or should i not do tiktok live i don't know what to do i decided i'm going to face my fears i'm going to do tiktok live this video is going to be like hot like you're still hopefully going to be able to see how i do my makeup my voice is also very croaky because apparently i'm losing it how i don't know but i think i am so i'm going to do tiktok live if i'm looking here it's because my phone is literally next to my camera if i'm looking here it's because obviously at my camera um, anyway guys i'm doing my makeup um it's been a long time since i've been on tiktok live so forgive me this is very scary but i'm gonna do my brows first so i'm just gonna you are fine <laughs> god <laughs> Okay, I'm using this Too Faced concealer. I'm trying to like record a YouTube video and do live at the same time. And if I'm being honest, I feel like to concentrate, I need to turn this music off because hey, <laughs> I don't think I could do two things at once. But I'm just gonna conceal under my brows. And I always use um, a concealer color that's basically my skin tone just because it works better in my opinion. Like that. And I don't always fill in my brows either, just because sometimes I feel like there's no point. I feel like my, my brows aren't the fullest, but they're also not that thin for me to have to fill them in, so. I don't always fill them in. Sometimes I do, and then other times I do. How's everyone? You guys need to talk to me. I don't know what to say. This is so weird. Okay, and then I'm gonna blend that out with just, can't find the correct blending brush that I wanna use, but I'm gonna use this one. Just a brush like this, nothing too thick. And they should just blend it out really carefully. Where are your brushes from? So this brush is from a company called Do Care on Amazon. But I use a lot of like Morphe brushes. I love Morphe brushes. But if you're looking for something that's like cheap and um, essentially like pocket friendly, Amazon, just look for like a 21 piece or 24 piece or 18 piece brush set. They're really good. These ones have held up quite well because I tend to put my 
brushes in the washing machine become lazy and the paint hasn't all chipped off whereas I have some where like the wood is chipped and they just look terrible so I always use um, mainly Amazon brushes and Morphe brushes. I'm now gonna go in with the Walida, this is not the Walida skin food, this Embryolise cream and then I'm also gonna go in with this Bobbi Brown face base. So I'm gonna do both of these and this one. I'm trying to record a video at the same time for YouTube. I'll probably scrap the video knowing myself because I can't do live and this video at the same time. Like, there's no way I'm not that skilled. <laughs> I generally like using both of these because this one helps keep my makeup on all day and then this one generally just gives me like a really nice glow but they're both really nice as like makeup bases even if you use them individually I'm just gonna use both on a regular day if I was going out this is exactly how I do my makeup because if you want your makeup to last I'm not gonna lie your skin prep actually needs to be really really good and if it's not your makeup won't last in my humble opinion so as you can see my skin looks really glowy but it's not going to look like this all the way sometimes if i feel like i have too much shine i take my beauty blender and just get rid of some of it because shine will kind of come through the foundation and i don't want to look completely like you know crazy also my lips are very dry this is embarrassing Next, I'm going to go in with foundation. Sometimes I underpaint, other times I don't underpaint. This time I'm not underpainting. I'm literally just going to go in with foundation like normal. But not too much because I'm actually staying at home. <laughs> and I'm going to take a really big brush like this to blend. I feel like sometimes with the lighting, the kind of foundation look like it's not the right colour for me, but it definitely is. <laughs> sometimes it looks slightly too red, but this is definitely the correct colour. Make sure you blend your foundation, guys. Like, blend, blend, and don't stop blending. Because if you don't, you'll look silly. And make sure you put foundation on your ears. Not too much, but enough, else you actually look crazy. But as you can see, my skin does still look quite like glowy, even though I put foundation on top, which is why I love doing skin prep like so thoroughly. So I'm going to do a bright under eye today, but I don't really like, I'll be honest, I don't like how most people do bright under eyes. So how I do it is I start with a concealer that is relatively the same colour as my skin tone. Or like one shade lighter and I put that down first and then I'm gonna build up the color rather than just kind of going straight in with a really bright concealer because that to me just looks mad and I don't know why people do it in the first place put a little bit down the bridge of my nose and then I also do my chin and cupid's bow then I'm gonna take a beauty blender I make sure it's damp um at this stage you can set your face if you want with like um a fixing spray but i'm not gonna bother doing that again because i'm literally just at home and i'm gonna blend from the bottom of here and just blend it out sometimes i let my concealer dry down a lot of the time i don't let my concealer dry down just because i don't really care for the extra coverage if i'm being honest And I also follow how my eyes are shaped. So the bottom of my eye kind of like lifts. So I follow like that line when it comes to putting my concealer down as well. Just because if you do it this, like you can change the, the shape of your face essentially with your concealer placement. I like how my face is shaped. So I just want to kind of keep my eyes like lifted and keep everything very much in the center of my face. But I'm going to blend all the concealer because I put my concealer everywhere where like light naturally hits. So I have a ring light on the moment, which is why I, uh, ring, ring. 
I have a, my ring light on at the moment, so that's why you can see like there's shine here, 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 and here. So I basically put concealer where light hits. Oh, thank you. Um, so that even when I'm not in the light, like you will still see like the highlights of my face, but I'm not gonna be overly bright with the concealer. I go in with the base color first. That is basically my foundation shade or natural shade. And I'm gonna build it up as well. So now that's all blended, I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna go in with my next concealer, which is slightly lighter. So you're gonna see there is a clear difference between how light this one, how light this one is, and this one is. Let's not talk about how messy my makeup is. I went out the other day and I didn't have my makeup bag, and I put my makeup in a, like a Tesco bag. So just please. Okay, I'm gonna go in with another one, but again, minimal. You don't need a lot. Like yes, you're doing a bright under eye. But you do not need a lot because that's when you use too much and you have flashback and you look like a crazy person. We don't want that. In order for my face to remain balanced, I'm going to take a tiny bit here and a tiny bit here and just a little bit on the bridge of my nose. I'm not going to do any more than that because, again, it will look crazy. This looks like a lot. It's not as much as it looks like on camera. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to blend it and basically follow exactly what I did, but with the other concealer. This is already very light, but I promise, guys, I'm not going to look like a crazy person. You just have to blend. Blend and blend and blend and don't stop blending. If you feel like lines are too harsh, use the bottom of your beauty blender and just blend it in. But I'm going to contour soon anyway, so that's fine. I'm just gonna keep blending and like my eye still looks lifted so even when I do this like the light still hits exactly here and I love that so I'm just gonna blend 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 and I'm gonna do this side too exactly the same so now this side my window is here and you can really see where the light hits that's why this side looks a lot more illuminated than this side but as soon as i turn my face you can see like where the light hits which is why i always put like a slightly brighter concealer just to emphasize like my bone structure a bit more and then i also put it of course on my forehead because when i do this you can kind of see where the light hits and we just want to emphasize that because if you were to do like flash photography for example you don't want your face to look flat you want your skin to um your skin and face to actually look like it has some kind of structure so that's why i always still highlight all the high points of my face even with a brighter concealer you just have to know how to blend it out and make sure that you don't overdo it and don't use like um for example, me, I don't use yellow concealers. The reason why I feel like a lot of people do the bright under eye and it doesn't look good is because you're using a yellow concealer. Don't do that. So for me, my undertone is very like neutral, very warm, very rosy. So what I do is I use concealers with the same undertone. So for example, I'm quite red, as you can tell. My bronzer or contour color has a very red undertone, you can tell. My concealers, very red undertones the only one that doesn't this one's a bit more like warmish orange but it still fits do you know what i mean but yeah don't use like yellow concealers because if your undertone doesn't match like yellow or like olivey tones you look crazy and that's why girls look like ghosts <laughs> when they do a bright under eye it's like don't don't do that and it comes and it goes um with powders as well use a powder that is your undertone like i'm gonna go in soon with a bobby brown powder you can tell that it's got a warm undertone as well but when we get there we'll get there i always make sure that the colors that i'm using match my natural undertone because i'm doing a bright under eye but as you can see i look very balanced like I, my face doesn't it doesn't look overly bright one blend but also use colors that actually fit your skin tone else you look silly so for what i'm going to do now again to balance my face because i want a bright under eye but i want a very sculpted look but i don't want it to be overbearing i'm going to take this this is very light but you only need a little bit and you're going to try to concentrate it only in like the center of your face so i'm literally going to take like a dot as you can see this looks white 
but by the time I blend it, you're not even gonna notice, but I will still have a bright under eye. I'm gonna take a little bit here, and I'm also gonna dot it here. Oh, not on my lip. <laughs> and on my chin. Because with a bright under eye, you don't want only your under eye to be bright. Again, your concealer is to like bring out the highlights of your face. So you need here to be highlighted and you need here and here to be highlighted. If you wanted to, sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. You can take a tiny bit and also put it here on your nose because the bridge of your nose is also going to come forward. And then you just blend as normal, but you just need a little bit because sometimes you think, oh, it's not enough. It's not going to look bright enough. I kid you not, when you pull your camera out, your camera will show you what you really look like. So don't embarrass yourself by going heavy handed because again, this is already, see how much this is blended out, but it's brightened up my under eye, but I don't look crazy. So you only need a tiny bit and you just blend it very, very, very carefully like that. And as you can see, it is bright. My eye is lifted, but I don't look silly. Like you can't really tell the difference between these two eyes. But you can see from here, where I have a bit of a groove in my face, here is still very light, which is what you want. Like you still want to concentrate the product mainly right here under your eye. And then I'm also going to go in and bronze. I don't really contour. Um, I'm also just bronze, but yeah. So now you can start to see that my face does look like very bright under eye-ish. Um, but I am going to tone that down in a second with my contour powder, contour colour, sorry. And then I'm also just going to blend out my forehead too. What I'm now going to do is contour. Now sometimes I'm sure you guys see like all these makeup artists online and like the contour just looks so flawless, it doesn't look harsh, it doesn't look muddy, anything like that. The best way to do that is to diffuse the colour. So what I always do is I take my contour shade, um, it's more of a bronzer because it's very warm, but I use the shade Sable from Too Faced, this concealer. And what I first do, so it's not so hard, is I put it on the back of my hand. Not too much, just enough. Put it on the back of my hand. And then I take my angled brush, like this, and I just sort of like dab it in and blend it across. And then I apply it to my face because then it's a lot more it's softer I don't know if you can see that it's a lot softer than when you just go in straight away with like a really heavy hand and you warm up your face really really nicely like you can see the warmth. can you see I feel like you can this side is not bronzed but here it is but it's so smooth no bronzer bronzer no bronzer Bonder. that is a way to do it that's how i always do it it is the softest and nicest application and it doesn't look harsh at all it is always better in my opinion to put your bronzer on your hand take a little bit then put it on your face then putting it straight on your face because this looks so soft and you can easily apply accidentally too much product on your face because i took like one little roll of my concealer on my hand and i haven't even used half of it so really and truly it's also for product control. I'm just going to do the same on this side. You don't need a lot, honestly, because it will pick up. Like, it will actually pick up on camera. There you go. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Ooh. Are you going for a dewy look or matte? I don't know. I might do dewy because I did a lot of like moisturizing skin prep so it'll probably be dewy obviously like I'm gonna set my face and stuff um, but I think I'll try and keep it quite quite dewy for my nose as well to bring it all together I just use like a really fluffy brush like this and do the same thing I try not to put it actually in the concealer and more or less where it's already been blended and then just again dust it down my nose because I don't want it to be too harsh a lot of people can mistakenly make 
their nose contour way too harsh and then you look like Michael Jackson and what for? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And just dust it through. It's looking great so far. Thank you so much. But yeah. And this is essentially how I just contour my face. Very simple, very easy. I do my makeup very quickly. Like I can do my makeup in 30 minutes if I really, really want to. Um, but today I'm kind of taking my time just because obviously I'm trying to like show you guys how I generally do my makeup. Tend not to put anything on my eyes. If I do put anything on my eyes, it will be my bronzer in a second because I like the Fenty bronzer. But now what we're going to do is blush. I'm going to go for pink blush. I just, I just love pink blush. My blush trick is using two colours. I always use two colours. I'll use a darker shade and a lighter shade just so it diffuses better, just so it looks nicer. What I will do is take the lighter shade and I put the lighter shade here. Always put the lighter shade like ever so slightly lighter here. This is a NYX um, blush. It's quite light on dark skin. It doesn't really do much, but it, it does enough. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. It's not fantastic, but it's okay. And then I'm going to take this one. This is very pigmented, so I try not to take too much. It's like a really dark plum berry color. Berry color. So, so gorgeous on dark skin. And I take a little brush, and then I put it here. This might even be too much low-key, but this is going to look chef's kiss, I promise you guys and then here as well and then what i am going to do is take a brush just a big brush and i'm going to blend it and i'm going to start with the darker color and then blend this color kind of up into my temples so i'm just going to blend like so blend 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 i like taking it up quite close to like here it doesn't look as crazy once it's powdered but just like that oh so nice love absolutely love and i just blend and blend and diffuse and blend it might look like i brought it too close here but i'm gonna put like powder on top and it just looks so nice that looks so pretty start to set my face first i'm gonna go in with bronzer yeah, I'm going to bronze first. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take the Fenty bronzer. This is also very pigmented, so I don't like using a lot at all. Um, if you use too much, you look crazy. I promise you, you just look like red. So I take a bit, like barely anything. It doesn't look like anything is on there. I promise you there's products on here and I tend to just dust it off and then kind of just sweep it on my face as opposed to packing it in. I like being quite gentle with bronzer application so it looks a lot more diffused. And I just, you can see the shine on my face starting to go away as well. And I just do here and then under here. I don't really care for under here too much, but I'm just gonna do under here as well. And then little bits of here so it doesn't look too bright. And then with a really small brush, how do you find the right shade of foundation? I, uh, how do I do it? I think because I've been doing makeup for a while, I can kind of guess. But what I would normally do, if I went to a store, I would take like a foundation shade that I think is similar to my face. And then I would test it here. Or generally some people want to match their foundation to their chest. I would literally just take a little bit and I would just put it on my finger. And I do that to see if it blends in. So my face is ever so, I mean, this is a pretty good match. Sometimes my face is a little bit darker, um, but what I will do is then I'll just brighten up my face to make it match. And then I use my foundation as a base color, but you can either do it here or on your chest, just depending on what you're going for. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on if you are the type who wants to just have your face and foundation matching or if you want your chest and foundation match um yeah chest and foundation matching are you a full-time makeup artist no i'll be honest i do makeup for fun um i do people's makeup as well sometimes but not often at all um i do hair i'm actually a hairstylist full-time but 
these days like back in lockdown i used to be on tiktok heavy i was on tiktok like every like two three days doing my makeup like it was it was actually ridiculous i was on here all the time doing my makeup and people just started saying oh my gosh your makeup is so nice you should start doing makeup so then um i started doing makeup here and there but i mainly just do makeup on myself like i've done weddings before i've done bridesmaids i've done birthdays i've done graduations but makeup is still something I would say that I'm learning. So I'm not confident enough to do it full time. Um, but I do makeup here and there. But I have a kit big enough to do makeup full time if I wanted to. I just stopped doing I can wear makeup once a month max. Because I don't be going nowhere. I don't leave the house. And I was at a point where I was like, why am I doing makeup if I'm not going anywhere? What's the point? Like, that's crazy. For blush, I'm going in with this blush by a brand called Nina. Um, if you're in the UK, you can find it in Superdrug. This is um, a lighter pink. I love it. It's like a really cute baby doll pink. It looks great on dark skin. It looks great on lighter skin. It looks great on everyone. And I'm just going to pat that in as well. And just diffuse it. The same undertone as you. If you want to bright it up, Brighten it up with a like. Okay, this is the color I'm going in with. Yeah, it looks quite warm, but I promise you, I'm going to look flawless. If I want to brighten it up, you just need a little small brush, and one that is ever so slightly lighter. But you can see it's not yellow. Put the yellow powder away. Why the hell are you? Why? <laughs> Shut it down for real, guys, please. <laughs> It is my, me and my sister, it is our biggest pet peeves. People putting on yellow powder. Stop using yellow powder, please. <laughs> for your own safety. For your own safety, don't do it. Pack on the powder that looks like your skin tone. See this? It's nice and warm. It might look too dark. I've already brightened up my under eye. I promise you it's not going to look dark. Put it down. Put it away. Someone asked, do you struggle for customers due to lack of black people? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. My area is so white. 3% of the population is black. Three. Three. Yeah. So you can imagine what it's like. Like I could I'm trans full transparency moment. I can go on an entire week without a single client. Without a singular client. One, I guess, because people don't know that I exist. Like this is a very um word of mouth type of town. If you don't know about a person, you're not gonna know about them. Simple. We, they don't do social media, and if they do, it's Facebook. I don't use Facebook. I just go on Facebook to go see if people um, have ca had kids and if they're married. That's why I use Facebook. If I don't use me, I don't go on Facebook. What the hell? So yeah, like honestly, sometimes I don't get enough people, but at the same time, when I do get people, I still make enough to like live well. So it's not that bad. It's annoying, yes, but it's not that bad. I promise. If you were given five minutes to go live on BBC, what would your message to the nation be? Ah, oh, what would it be? Do whatever makes you happy and trust your instincts that is the only thing i can say and then also actually do you see how my under eyes brightened but i don't look crazy that's why i use a palette that's your color anyways <laughs> um what would i say i would also say anything you think of in your head you can do it let me tell you something i started my brand um when i was in my first year of college so basically what happened was, so how I started doing hair, where I live, predominantly white. Most people here are white. Everybody's white, okay? And I went in my hair done for prom. And if I'm being honest, there was not anyone who could do my hair the way I wanted to. Like, people here can do hair, but they can't do hair like the London babes. I'm not even going to pretend like they can. They cannot, okay? So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to go to London to get my hair done. Went to London, got my hair done, went to Peckham, shout out to my cousin Shimada, she took me to Peckham, went to go get my hair done for prom. Then I came back, I said, wait a minute, how am I gonna look after my hair? How am I gonna look after my hair? I don't know how to look after my hair. So then I started uh, jumping on YouTube University and started my business. And that is what pays my bills now. That is how I live, that is how I travel, that is how I work, that is how I maintain my own schedule that's how I do it and till this day there's sometimes when I'm like oh my gosh I want to start a new brand I want to do this I want to do that and I was saying to my sister oh my gosh I'm scared I'm scared I'm scared I'm scared and she was like do you know that hair was just something in your head and now like I have a physical hair studio salon like I have a studio salon people come to me to get their makeup done people come to me to get their hair done like I have something tangible that was in my head 
it was in my head and now like I can literally touch it and I can see it. Why on earth would you think you're incapable of doing anything? It was an idea in my head. So I would literally say to everyone, you are capable of doing whatever you want. If it's in your head, you can conceptualize it. If it's in your head, you can make it physical. That's what I would say. What do you to do for, for to prevent your concealer from creasing under your eyes? It will never not crease. It's gonna crease, guys. It will always crease. Um, try to use minimal product. That's the only thing I can say. And then if you can set immediately, set immediately. But it will always crease. It will crease. I always set down my nose too with a little bit of powder. Not too much, just enough. And then also, I forgot to say, when I'm um, setting usually my forehead, I use a brush and I just dust the powder on top like that, just because it's enough. I don't like using um, one of these because it can look too harsh. And then after I do that, I will go back in with my bronzer shade just to diffuse it out. So again, it doesn't look too mad. I feel like my blush has already disappeared. Guys, this is why I say you put on a lot of blush. Put on a lot of blush because we'll run away. What color foundation do you use um, and different brands? So my undertone is usually quite warm, rosy, neutral. So in the Clinique, I use the shade Warm Natural 124 Sienna D, D for deep. In the NARS, I believe my shade is New Caledonia. In, if you ever had the luminous, weightless luminous foundation, even though it was discontinued, my shade was Benares. In the Too Faced foundation, my shade is Spiced Rum. Um, I'm trying to think of what other foundations I have. In the Fenty, I think I have the wrong shade. I think I had 430, slightly too dark, so like one or two up from that because it does oxidize. But yeah, I don't really have many foundations, which is not good. I need more, but those are generally the shades but i'm very much warm natural warm neutral sorry favorite setting powder the bobby brown ones these are too good these sheer finish um loose powders are amazing i'm not gonna lie everyone says they love the huda beauty one i used to love it when i got it last year jan i'm not gonna lie i have not touched that thing in a year after i got these i put that down very quickly very very quickly and i haven't picked it up since and honestly i don't regret it i'm gonna set with uh the charlotte tilbury spray my mom's a babe she went to houston recently and got this for me she got me this and the one size one because this is sold out in the uk and i said oh. <laughs> girl yeah i'm gonna use this one size one too i'm just gonna spray it on my hand first to make sure there's no like white and then this is strong but the people who said this stuff keeps your makeup on all day didn't lie <laughs> they did not lie this stuff is amazing too good now um i feel like my hair looks like a helmet <laughs> so i'm gonna do my hair quickly plug in my hot comb we need more tutorials i want to do more i definitely don't want to do um more <laughs> The Revolution Banana Powder will look beautiful on you. I want to try it. I've never tried it as well, actually. I've never tried, like, even the Ben Nye Banana Powder that was, like, so amazing back in the day. Never tried that. Um, there's so much makeup that I want to try. Like, I have a lot of makeup, but I'm so stuck in my ways. Like, I'm the type of person, like, when I find something that I like that works, that's all I'm running with. I'm not changing it because, like, why don't fix what's not broken. So I stick with the same makeup, but um, I do want to like try some more of like these indie brands. A lot of the stuff that's also on um, like TikTok that I see, like some of the made by Mitchell stuff. I have some of his stuff. I have his um, blushes, like the little ones with the green top. I'm just going to try to get my hair flat. Um, I'm not going to put any serum or in it or anything because if I'm being honest, this wig needs to come off and wash. So I'm gonna straighten her first while my hot comb heats up. Um, yeah. I love this. I think my makeup came out so nice. It translates really well on camera too. This has been good. I think I might end the live soon. Cause the main point of this was to do my makeup and my hair. And I think that's been pretty much achieved love that for me i love my hair oh guys just jet black hair honestly it just makes so much sense you can't go wrong with it you absolutely cannot go wrong with jet black hair 
I haven't even filled in my eyebrows. Um, I don't even know what my brow stuff is either. Sometimes I don't fill in my brows at all. I kind of like the softer brow look. I'm not even sure if I've got any of my brow stuff with me. This is not the record color. This is definitely for my lips, but I'm just gonna use it to extend the tail end of my brows just a little bit. Normally I use a brow pencil, but I have no idea what that is, so. I'll use that later. Do you get free quality wigs? Let me tell you something. The wigs these companies be sending you are terrible. They're bad. I don't care if I'm gonna ruin a bag right now. I don't, I don't care. They're not good. I'm sorry. And I'm never, I'm never gonna pretend like they are. They're not. Like, I've been sent hair by these companies and I hate it. I hate it. That's why any video that I had done where I'd been sent hair from vendors, they're deleted. I don't like the wigs. I'm not gonna pretend like I do, they're terrible. They are rubbish, they are terrible quality. I'm sorry. Like, they're not good. And I'm not gonna pretend they are, just for a video. I'm not doing it. You kinda look like Megan Thee Stallion. People tell me that a lot. I think it's the eyes, because I kinda have like quite lifted eyes, but yeah, thank you. And thank you for being honest. Yeah, guys, let me tell you something. I had a wig sent to me by um, Ali Pearl one brown wig that was sending to everyone this was last year they were like last year probably like april time that wig oh my gosh guys i i straightened the wig and it was already catching and like fuzzing up at the back of my neck before i'd even finished recording the video terrible quality the wig was rubbish it was rubbish i don't have a hair company sending me um they were like oh can you do clippings i said okay cool I said I need curly clippings because I have like natural 4C hair and if I'm doing clippings I'm not going to fry my hair off to do straight clippings, send me straight bundles, I'll do a sewing or something, you know what I mean? They sent me the hair. They sent me like some big, big loose waves. I'm thinking I have tight 4C hair and you're sending me loose wave. What am I supposed to do with that? How do you get PR slash brands to reach out to you? Um, Just by posting. It might sound cliche. My first PR package was in like 2021. I was just posting um, and a skincare company reached out to me. Till this day, they still send me PR. And I just did a little video and then just post, 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 tag companies. Um, sometimes you can join like PR agencies or like PR websites. Sometimes you can sign up and then they send out emails like, you know, how many followers have you got? and um, they're doing this collab if you're selected you get sent pr da, 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 da. so that's usually like that's how i got started i stumbled into this content thing it was an accident it was really an accident i just posted one video of me getting my nails done in nigeria <laughs> at christmas time ago and it got almost half a million views i remember i closed my phone went to sleep obviously connection in nigeria is not great so i must have woke up thinking oh yeah my first tiktok is nothing and then it just it blew up and then I just kept on with the momentum of posting, 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 posting. And then that's how I eventually got to where I am now. I'm nowhere near as consistent as I should be. I am not. Um, everyone can get onto me for it. I completely understand. I'm not as consistent as I should be. But the more consistent you are, the better. So just post, tag the companies um, all the time. Like if you do your makeup, do at the end of a reel do a product list tag all the companies if you're posting something on tiktok um tag all the companies put the shades everything could you possibly earn money earn enough money for it being full time yes <laughs> guys there is stupid amounts of money in this content creating industry and i'm telling you from someone whose friend works at a pr company they make money these influencers that you see make a lot of money a lot of money it's not a joke they make thousands and thousands and thousands for even an instagram picture let alone a reel there's a lot of money just keep going keep posting and be your authentic self it's easier said than done but be your authentic authentic self there's one girl that i used to i still follow her her name is pink pink or latte i think she's nigeria and she does a lot of like yoruba like you know mix mix stuff i remember i started following her ages ago like probably when she first started on tiktok she didn't have that many followers but she was doing okay she maybe had like about 1k 
then she starts just started posting random videos like of her switching between Europa and everything just laughing being silly being silly being silly I'm pretty sure the babes now on like what maybe like 25k now from just being herself she's just being silly she's literally just there being silly and people love it honestly what builds your social platforms especially on tiktok is just being yourself just be yourself and do what you want to do and don't be looking at what everybody else is doing it's i please like i'm talking to myself here because it's easier said than done like sometimes i'm like i want to get back on tiktok but then i'm like oh, oh my gosh like i'm boring sometimes i think i'm boring so i'm like i don't want to do anything or then it comes to editing and i'm really picky i'm like i don't like the content i don't know how it looks really and truly the content doesn't look bad but i feel like it looks bad so then i'm like i'm not gonna post it when really and truly it's the content that you don't think will do well that will do well so just post your content and be going like honestly just do it you have nothing to lose i've never met anyone be more informative and supportive about influence in my life do it man honestly you've got nothing to lose like every shot that you don't take as a miss you might as well try give it a try try for six months try for a year if you can even if it's trying to post once a week try with a schedule that works for you if you know you can do once a week do once a week and build your way up then you can maybe do twice a week then you can start doing three times a week but just start at a steady pace your page will grow consistency is the key like don't ever let anyone tell you it's not it may be hard but consistently it will catch wind because i remember seeing something that it was just like it's not that you don't have followers they just haven't found you yet because when they do they will flock in numbers you just have to find your audience that's all social media is finding your audience when you look at people like um Aaliyah's face or Kyra or Monique they weren't in the same position as the rest of us they didn't st like they didn't start with followers they just built it up and then their followers came and now their pages are growing at exponential rates for them being themselves like your personality is who you are base your platform around who you are if you have something that you enjoy you do enjoy doing makeup base your content around makeup if you like doing hair base your content around hair if you like cooking do a bit of cooking if you like talking chat shit like <laughs> build your platform off of what you love doing that's the simplest way to do it what do you enjoy most about influencing i wouldn't call myself an influencer just because i don't do enough to be one like i i don't post enough uh i, I don't i would say that i'm a content creator more because i do enjoy like making youtube videos and editing and stuff like that um but what i enjoy the most is just making the content and seeing people actually like it and i love the process of growing um it might be slow but it's like really rewarding like when you hit like 600 followers or like a thousand followers like, it's really nice it is really really nice content creating is fun man it's fulfilling if it wasn't fulfilling so many people wouldn't like there wouldn't be loads of people doing it but hey it's great not gonna lie i would definitely do it um full time if i was like a bit more serious what is your favorite content to produce Ooh, uh, i would say vlogs because vlogs feel more natural to me because you see who i am that's why i enjoy vlogs because you're just being you who's gonna judge you for being you yeah people might not like you but that's okay move on to somebody else like i'm me um so yeah i would definitely say i enjoy vlogs more um and my favorite platform youtube is my favorite platform i can watch youtube day in day out for hours and hours and hours and hours on end with no problem i love youtube i love watching people's vlogs i love when people go on holiday i love when people do their makeup i love when people just sit there and talk and ramble i love youtube because i feel like people can youtube and tiktok i would say they're quite similar but i love how you can just be you and people take it for what it is i feel like with instagram you have to be so polished and i'm not always polished i don't always have my hair and makeup done i don't always want to create aesthetic content i don't always want to create um like i don't always have to travel to london to go get pics outside or go all the way to london to go to a content studio it's exhausting um i'm very much like i'm not gonna go out of my way to pretend to be who i'm not for social media which is why i like youtube pick a platform that you feel is authentic to you if you feel like you can work instagram work instagram feel like you can work youtube work youtube feel like you can work uh tiktok work tiktok even twitter you can get paid from twitter now hey if you can work twitter work twitter and snapchat snapchat is one of the highest paying platforms if you have one of those uh the little stars my goodness you can earn a lot of money from snapchat you know unbelievable amounts of money 
it's, it's actually crazy sorry my question might be stupid I'm cooking. do i need to tag people on it to get where i need to be um i would say yes tag the brands the brands are always watching they are always watching if you think they're not they are because they're looking for new content creators all the time so if you do your makeup tag every single company brand that you used and keep tagging them tagging them tagging them tagging them tagging them tagging them just do it they will see your content before you know it you'll see them start liking your stuff they'll be watching you they'll actually be watching before you know it them they might reach out for like a gifted partnership gifting is not bad everyone wants to be paid straight away you can start with gifting and build a relationship build a relationship with the brand and then you can start charging like my first partnership with Too Faced was last year, April time. I was tagging them in my stuff all the time. Tagging them, tagging them, tagging them, tagging them. Um, and then I joined an app called Vamp, I think. And Too Faced must have had a concealer campaign. Um, Cause they were releasing either more shades of the multi-use, this one, or some, something along those lines. So I must have joined and I applied for the campaign and I got selected almost immediately. Um, and they were like, this is what we want you to do. This is a brief, um, tell us your rates, we'll pay. And that is what happened. Tag the companies. They're watching you. I promise you they're watching. Tag, 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 and shoot your shop. Offer a paid campaign, come up with a concept. If you want to do a makeup video, come up with a concept with their products, reach out, see if they're down for it. A lot of the times they are like what brands want is awareness what they want is content um don't let them take advantage of you be mindful like if you think that they're asking for a lot for what you're getting it is a lot trust your instincts i, I promise you on that but work with the brands create um a relationship build your way up it will never hurt and it'll pay off in the long run because a lot of people who were getting paid big big money from brands started working with these brands years ago and kept up the relationship and put your best foot forward as well don't do half ass content don't do it don't cut corners do it because your social media is also like your cv when a brand wants to approach you they're going to look at what you've done so always put your best foot forward same you would with any uni assignment put your best foot forward they are watching and also don't delete your content you might be tempted to if you want to restart don't delete it it's a catalog it's a cv it's like a portfolio your instagram your tiktok um your youtube it's a portfolio leave it there only take it down if it's like really really bad um or if for example you don't like the reels on your instagram page just remove them off your profile grid and leave them on the real side so they can still be seen because brands are going to scroll through your stuff to see how good you are before selecting you so yeah your feed is your cv keep the stuff don't delete it but yeah sometimes i feel like i would love to be like an influencer manager not that I don't want to do influencer myself, but I think I'm, I think I'd be more on the side of wanting to help people as opposed to doing it for me. I think that's kind of the terms I've come to because I love creating content. In lockdown, my stuff was blowing on Instagram. I'm talking like I was consistently hitting minimum 300,000 views on a reel. And then I took a break because I was like, I need to get this degree. I need to get my degree. Instagram, you can wait. That break, that's what did me. Don't take a break. If you take a break, don't take a break for as long as I did because that's what catapulted me to like, back, 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 back. It's like I took a thousand steps back. And now I'm like, I'm still trying to work my way to catch up. Sometimes my stuff does good, but it doesn't do half as well as it used to. Um, which is kind of disheartening because it makes you feel like you don't want to do it But again, you just have to keep going and then when the eyes find you they will find you but keep the momentum up That's why they tell you be consistent so that when the followers do find you You don't find it hard to keep up because you've already set the routine So what I do is for me for example, I've tried to start uploading on YouTube's like on YouTube's on YouTube twice a week so I try to do on a Wednesday and a sunday and then i try to put a system in place that works for me so for example i realized that i can't always do a weekly vlog sometimes it's too much to edit so what i decide to do is a daily vlog 
so for example if i knew that i was going out today i'm going to a party i'm going to run errands i'll vlog the day so that's easier to edit and i can put that on on sunday or if i know that i want to do an update and makeup route video i'm going to do a makeup video really quickly i can upload that on wednesday if i know that i don't have enough time to record an entire week to upload i find what works for me whatever is easiest so find a routine that works find out a schedule that works that fits with you if you work full time maybe only do short sharp vlogs like if you're going out on the weekend with your friends vlog the weekend try and edit every day after work and then upload it the following week there's timing too everything will come at the right time that is very true because i could argue that when i became big on instagram or when my instagram started taking off i was not prepared <laughs> i wasn't prepared i wasn't luckily like it was quite easy for me to create content back then so it wasn't like a it wasn't like a huge shock but I, I definitely wasn't prepared enough to like keep up with it all the time and even with uni um when i decided to take my break in third year i had to take the break because i was like i can't do both at the same time and again that's kind of what stung me a little bit but i mean content is just consistency and finding your crowd not niche crowd find your crowd don't ever niche down no one is just one-sided so this whole thing of find your niche find your niche don't do that like do what you like you like cooking make some of your videos about cooking um you like doing makeup make some of your videos about makeup like i used to post cooking stuff on my um youtube all the time because i was a, at one point in my life i was a caterer so i catered now i do hair full time so i post more hair stuff or like i might do a vlog and i'm in the studio doing some wigs and i'm like oh do you know what let me show people how to pluck so i'll set up the camera and i'll do it like i won't do i'll do like um like captions teach people how to pluck real quick things like that do what works for you you're a 22 <laughs> yeah i'm 22 not 23 until next year but yeah uh it's giving british megan the stallion someone literally said that earlier <laughs> i look older i know i think it's the hair is that the hair or the makeup one of the two but yeah i'm 22 um your beauty is like sunset the way it brightens ah that's so sweet thank you <laughs> are you a makeup artist i love how natural makeup looks um kind of i'm also just do makeup for myself but i do do it for other people as well here and there um but yeah thank you i am wearing a full face of makeup i didn't even show you guys proper proper how my makeup looks like up close but yeah this is um this is she yeah oh my goodness guys it is several hours later i don't know if i'm gonna upload this footage or not if i'm being honest with you i was on tiktok live for like three and a half hours <laughs> which is unbelievable because i haven't done that in so 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 long but it was so amazing had some really great chats with people met some really lovely people um but i'm gonna close out this video i don't know if i'm gonna upload this footage i hope i do but i may not but this is what my makeup looks like after several hours um it's now 7 30 i finished my makeup around four something and it still looks really good but anyway i'm gonna love you leave you guys thank you so much for watching this video like comment subscribe let me know if you want more makeup videos more in-depth makeup videos more focused makeup videos because this video was a tiktok live as well um and yeah i'll see you guys in my next one bye